All right, beloved, right on the heels of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, where we saw praise for the providence of God, how God loves uh, believers dearly, chose them, saved them, is sanctifying them as they believe in the truth, called by the preaching of the gospel. Then there's this plea that we saw to personally hold on to the promises of God, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 15. So then, brothers, because of all this, because we're praising God that you are beloved by the Lord and chosen by the Lord to be saved and to be sanctified and to believe in the truth, and he called you through the gospel that you may obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, because of that, it, he doesn't say now, just relax, sit back and relax, get a glass of lemonade, sit in the backyard in, in a lounge chair and just, just watch it all unfold. No, he says, you stand firm and hold on. You hold on to the truth. It says here, so then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. He's not saying traditions of man where we create these artificial boundary points. When he says traditions, uh, either by a spoken word or a letter, he's speaking of the sure promises of God, the sure and steadfast promises of God. He is speaking of the inspired, inerrant, infallible, authoritative, conscience-binding, perfect, eternal word of God. And he's saying, you hold on. You stand firm, take your stand, and, and hold on tight. And what that pointed out to us, and what it points out to us on an ongoing basis, is that drifting is a dangerous proposition. If you don't stand firm, if you don't hold on, you have a tendency to drift away. We talk about it in organizations all the time about mission drift. Mission drift, and that can easily happen if we don't hold on to the truth that we need to hold dear. And mission drift, let's say in an organization, can come up when, when, it's, when it's made up its own guidelines. That's one thing. But what about mission drift in the church? What about mission drift among believers where God has given unchanging biblical truth, eternal and then mankind wants to change that and to say that doesn't really count. That's not really valid. And what, what Paul and his friends are saying to the believers is, you personally hold on to the promises of God. You make sure in that reality of being chosen by God and saved and sanctified and that you would be uh, sharing in the glory of Christ, that you would steadfastly hold on to hope and truth and that you would stand firm and that you would hold on to the word of God. This is God's desire for his people. And some of the things I brought out on Sunday, um, just in terms of don't buy into lies, don't think it's loving to capitulate to false teaching. If you have questions about the truth, let's talk about it. If you're playing with fire and prideful, listen, listen to God and his word. If you're worried that you might fall, hang on to the anchor, hold on. And, and make sure that you are connected in community with other believers. This is written to the church. We have eternal comfort and good hope by grace. It's a huge encouragement to believers, but it's a huge call to rest in the Lord, to seek the Lord's will. Uh, we're not holier than thou. We're needier than everybody else. We need what the Lord gives, and we need to discern truth. We need to be connected in community. And there's something I mentioned about humility on Sunday that hopefully you'll remember. And also I mentioned about this. Beware of self-determination. And what I mean by that, I gave an example of what if a sailor is new to a ship and the crew, and, and he asks this question, Captain, where are we going? And what if it's nighttime, and what if the ship's movements are seems a little erratic to this sailor, and he's used to training his eyes on the North Star as a fixed reference point? What if the captain replies, see that lantern on the, on the bow of the ship right there in front? That's our guide. You'd be scratching your head, but wait a minute. You're going to follow that? You're going to follow? So if you guide a ship by a reference point that's on the ship, it means the ship is going to be adrift. It's, it's going to voyage to nowhere. And, and your life in Christ is, is like a ship, if you think about it. And our hope in Jesus is the anchor for our souls. But the Word of God is, is, uh, is, our, is, our, is a light to our path, right? And, and it's... It's a reference point. We need a reference point outside of ourselves and outside of this world. We need like a North Star. It's the Word of God. 
it doesn't change. The grass withers, the flower falls off. But as Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, the word of our God stands forever. That's why when you're holding on to it, it will not move. And one more thing I mentioned is that be, beware of harsh and sinful judgment. I think a lot of times in the world in which we live today, we start to think it's all or nothing. And we think, well, if there's a theologian, or if there's a writer, or if there's a leader, if there's a pastor, if there's a, even a politician, and we say they're either on, in the good category or they're in the bad category. And it's this reductionist approach to life that, uh, as one person put it, impoverishes us. That if we refuse to listen or learn from people uh, and that are devout, following the Lord, biblically rooted, theologically helpful, but they don't line up exactly with the latest theological position or the latest political proposal, and we, then we reject wisdom in many ways. Because what happens is we start putting people, we say, instead of unity, we want selfish insistence on our own ideas. When God hasn't drawn the line so tight, there are certain things he has drawn the line absolutely tight with. Salvation, uh, the, the authority of Scripture. There are plenty of things where people disagree and sincere and intelligent Christians can differ. Now, not on moral issues, not on sexual issues, not on things that are un, unmovable in terms of Scripture. Okay, so when you get to, is it okay for a Christian to celebrate Pride Month? I would say no. The loving thing to do would be to not celebrate it. Still be kind and loving to everyone. But it doesn't mean you have to celebrate or condone of sin. But also it doesn't mean you should be condemning everyone for their sin. Just preach the gospel of the grace of God in Christ. That's a way you hold on to the truth. There's this plea. Personally, hold on to the promises of God.